Hello everyone, my name is Paul Laporte and I am the Cybersecurity Coordinator at the Advanced Institute for Manufacturing. As most manufacturers are trying to figure out how to operate from home offices, we have had many people asking about what to do for their conference calls. Today I'm going to show you how to install and start a meeting with one of the more popular conference call services out there, Zoom. The nice thing about Zoom is that it's free to use and has no restriction on two-person conference calls. Group conference calls do have a limit of 40 minutes, but if you're going to have to use the service for longer periods of time, it may be worth investing in one of their subscription packages, which are all pretty reasonable. Now, this is by no means the only solution out there, and there are a variety of good conference call services that are either inexpensive or free. Zoom is simply what we're going to be talking about today and what we're using right now at the AIM offices, though the process for using any other service is going to be pretty similar to this one. The first thing you'll need to do is go to Zoom's website, which is www.zoom.com. Uh, you'll see up here that it says zoom.us. It should automatically direct you to that. Either of those will work, either zoom.com uh, or zoom.us. From here, you can click on the plans and pricing link at the top of the page. Uh, and this is going to show you what Zoom has to offer. Uh, if you want to choose one of the paid services for Zoom, you can do that here. If not, you can always just sign up for their free account and just click on that link right here. Either way, the installation process is going to be the same. You'll just have to enter payment information if you use one of the subscription services and that won't be required for the free service. Now the sign up process is simple as can be. Just enter your work email address and Zoom will send you a confirmation link within seconds to your email account. Uh, you can also have the option to sign up with your Google and your Facebook accounts, but I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, just enter an email address, follow the link, and you'll be all set. Now, once you get the confirmation email, you're going to go ahead and click on the link that's included, and you're going to be taken to an activation page. Now, I've already activated my account, so I can't show you that part, but it's very, very simple. All you have to do is put in your first name, your last name, and then create a password. Uh, it'll also give you the option to send out invites to other people to join Zoom, uh, which can be helpful if you have colleagues who are going to be needing the service as well. Um, and then finally, you are going to be asked to download the Zoom software and test out your first meeting. All right, now once you submit the info, your download should start automatically. You're going to notice that the Zoom installation should pop up on your browser asking you where to save the file. Um, it might also automatically download and then you'll be able to see the file down in the lower left hand corner. So you can just go ahead and select an area to save that to and just click save and then you'll notice that that's gonna pop up right here. Now, if for some reason you do end up uh, losing this file, you can't get access to it, it's in a different place because it's a browser or it just didn't pop up, if you hit the Windows key and type in Zoom, uh, then that is going to take you right to that application as well. So you can go ahead and click on that and then that'll start that up. And then once that loads, you'll get taken to the Zoom screen where you can host the call, where you can invite people, and you can uh, basically get started. Uh, you will have an option here if you do have a web camera to uh, turn that on so people will be able to see your face. It is not required. Uh, it is just an option that's available for you. Uh, also with Zoom, you will have a share screen button that'll allow you to share your desktop if you wanted to do a PowerPoint presentation and show that to other members of the meeting. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different options for you. In addition, there are text chat features. If you have people asking questions during a presentation, but they don't want to uh, chime in on the call with their voice, they can do that via a chat box. Um, or you can uh, also record the call for playback at a later time. Now, if you want to invite other people to this meeting, so they'll actually be able to join in on the call, you can find the information for that by clicking on the invite button here. Uh, where you'll have a couple different options to send uh, emails. Uh, if you don't have any of these services or you don't have email set up through Outlook on your computer, you can just click uh, the copy invitation button into here. And then you can just open up your regular email client. I'll show that here. And then just paste that information in. And then that will include the link for people to follow and then the meeting ID uh, and the password for the ID. Now, if people on your call are trying to dial in via just a cell phone or a landline and they don't have a computer or they don't have this set up on their computer, they will still be able to call in through a conference call. Uh, the information for that is going to be right here. Uh, so step one, you're going to need to call either of these numbers. 
uh, and follow the verbal instructions. Uh, so either the 415-762-9988 or the 646-568-7788. Either of those numbers should work. Uh, then once you get that number, it will ask you for the meeting ID, uh, which will be included on the invitation that you send out to people. So they would just type this number in on their keyboard. Um, it won't ask for a password. Um, it'll ask for a participant code, but that's optional. Once they put in this meeting ID, they should just be able to hit the pound signal, uh, and then they'll be through on the call, and they'll show up as an audio caller uh, for this. Obviously, they won't be able to see anything that people are sharing on screens or see uh, video feeds from people's webcams, but if they need to just get the audio, that will work. Uh, additionally, there is an app for uh, cell phones, for smartphones as well. Uh, so if you wanted to use that, then you could uh, use video conferencing for that as long as your phone had a camera. Uh, now, that's the process for setting up Zoom. That's the process for running each call. When you're ready to end the call, you can just hit X, close this button out, or hit end meeting right here, and that'll shut the meeting down. So if you hit that, um, you can end the meeting for the all, or if you're not the host or you want to leave people still talking after you go, you can just hit leave meeting. But if you want to end the meeting, we'll just end it right there. And then that just takes you to congratulations on hosting your first Zoom meeting. That was the showing the test was successful. And from that point on, it's just setting up each of those meetings in the future, just like you did your test meeting. Now, I will point out that because of the large volume of people using all of these services, uh, especially for those who are trying to dial in by phone. Uh, the phone quality for the calls is very weak. It's very bogged down. Um, there are a lot of issues that we've had personally and we've had others reporting to us. So if you're gonna use a service like this and you wanna use a free service, uh, I haven't seen these issues show up with pay services as much, but if you want to just use something very quick, very easy, and very inexpensive or free for you, uh, you may want to use, make sure you're using the actual um, computer calls rather than dialing in on a phone. Uh, that seems to handle the data much better. I think that the phone services are getting bogged down a bit. So um, if you are having trouble with those calls, that is something to consider. Also something to consider when you're scheduling these meetings, if you do have people who need to call in via a phone, you may want to schedule them at an off time. So don't schedule it at the top of the hour. Schedule it at you know 10 after or 15 after. Usually there's a pretty big burst of activity right around uh, the beginning of any hour where a lot of people will be using that service at any given time. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, and if it doesn't work the first time, try multiple times calling back. If you get a busy signal or you say that you can't get service, uh, it should let you through at some point. Those are just some things that you may have to keep in mind. Um, unfortunately, because of the environment that we're in, uh, we're all trying to do the best we can um, with the tools that we have in front of us and not having to spend too much money to be able to do it. This is just one option out there for you. Like I did mention, there are a variety of other uh, very good services that are either uh, cheap or free. All are pretty easy to use. Uh, Skype, uh, free conference call, um, go to meeting. There are a variety of ones out there. Zoom is just the one that we're using right now. You can do some research and find out what one's best for you. Uh, if you do have any questions about this subject or any others, you can let me know. I am gonna include my uh, email information in the description for this video. So if you have any other questions, you can let me know. Uh, also, uh, keep an eye out because we are gonna be doing some additional webinar videos as the days and weeks go by um, with some cybersecurity tips, uh, some tips on uh, best practices for home offices. Uh, we're trying to act as a continual resource to our manufacturers, even when we ourselves are stuck at home and while a lot of our, our customers are working from home as well. So hope this was informative for all of you. Uh, stay safe and I hope to hear from all of you and get back to business as usual soon. Take care.